All right, we're back on the desk with Andrew Pyle and John Zegner. We've talked the U.S. banks. We've talked about lightening up a little bit on tech and finding other areas of the market. A lot of what's underpinning this is what's going on with inflation. One trader that I follow noted that uh, for the major economies, the city um, economic surprise index for inflation is now negative for the first time since 2020. So the trend seems to be our friend. But when we listen to central bankers, I mean, it doesn't seem like they're taking any comfort in this decelerated 10. They're still towing a very hawkish line. That doesn't seem to be the mood of the market, though. Uh, John, how do we unpack that dichotomy? Well, it is. It's a bit of a no-win for the economy, Amber, because, you know, as Andrew mentioned before, if, if, if you start lightening too early, you're just going to re-accelerate inflation, which is the last thing central bankers want, because they'll re-accelerate it from a higher base, which is even a bigger problem, and then you end up like the late 1970s again. You know, on the other hand, they, they will continue with these higher rates until the economy slows down enough to get inflation down to the target rate, and that's going to require effectively a recession, in my view. I, I think this idea of a soft landing, uh, you know, a, a continued economic growth getting us down to 2% uh, is, is a bit of a fallacy. So uh, investors are impatient, though. Economies are behemoth. They move very slowly. They're glacial. So I think, you know, we are moving towards a slowdown. We haven't repealed the laws of economics. You've seen the most aggressive rate hikes in, in history, basically, in the past year and a half. That will have an impact on a financially levered economy. It will happen. It's just that, you know, there's been so much pandemic-related uh, spending out there that's you know kept things going and in a resurgence of services that it's taken longer to occur. Bank of Canada Governor Tip Macklem, when he spoke on Wednesday, said that there is a possibility you can get both price stability and growth. He sounded perhaps the most optimistic that I, I have seen him about avoiding a recession scenario. Is that, you know, a little bit of a fantasy? I think it is. And I think, you know, basically what Tiff said is, is the mandate for the Federal Reserve is maximum employment and price stability. And we're not there yet. We don't have price stability yet. We've had, a, you know, a few months now, Amber, of really nice looking headline inflation numbers, producer price inflation, to your point, the surprise index showing a negative. But we're not there yet. Like, we yeah. haven't gotten back. And I think what the market needs to figure out is it's not how much the Bank of Canada or the Federal Reserve raises rates. If you go back in time and see what influenced the economy, it's how long do you stay there once you get there. So we're not even in that game yet because we still have rate hikes going on. If you want to make the argument that we're going to be there for three or four months, then the stock market's correct. But if you think we're going to sit there for like nine months or 12 months until inflation comes down, I think the stock market's got it completely wrong in terms of what that's going to do to the economy. Earnings are coming in amazing, though, right? I mean, it's not, we're not rallying on a bad set of earnings. We were expecting the worst pace of earnings yeah. growth since 2020 this quarter. All the majors across sectors are, are showing strength. What is interesting is that you're not getting a huge nudge up in the stocks or it doesn't right. hold. Um, so that maybe that speaks to your point that there is a little bit of caution out there or that it was already priced in. But I don't see us falling off of a cliff in these earnings and these forecasts. No, and earnings are going to be good. So think about it. If we've got input prices now that are showing disinflation, uh, some people are going to argue we're going to have deflation in input prices. Yet I have a buoyant economy and a buoyant consumer that will allow me, the retailer, to continue to nudge prices up. Then I've got margin expansion, which is good for earnings and stocks. But that ends the minute the consumer walks in the store and says, I don't have enough money for you to do this anymore. And then we're going to have a rationalization, I think, in the markets where earnings are going to come back down. And more importantly, Amber, what are revenues going to do in the next 12 months if nominal GDP growth starts to really crank down? Nominal GDP growth basically rules the roost in terms of where the stock market goes. And if revenue growth is not there, I don't know how these valuations can hold up. And yet, uh, John, you mentioned, uh, you know, you think you're going to be glass half empty. I don't know anybody more glass half full than people who invest in the S&P 500. Think about what it has survived, what it has outperformed, profit growth falling all of this year. Uh, the first time we've seen bank collapses since the financial crisis. You sailed through that. Uh, you know, Bitcoin imploding uh, last year, although that's not systemic, but it certainly was an issue. I mean, how do you... Think about fighting that tape, fighting that momentum. 
Oh, I feel, I feel like been in 40 years of doing this, I feel like I'm fighting the tape every single day I come in kind of thing. So I, I don't really get concerned about that. I'm more interested in, you know, the economics, the profitability and all. And Andrew's point is very good as well uh, uh, in terms of what he mentioned about pricing behavior. Well, we've seen inflation uh, actually help earnings the last couple, the last two years in particular because you haven't seen as much volume growth as you've seen price growth. As you start to reverse some of that, that's going to be hard on earnings. Earnings will still be down this year. I think the expectations are too high for next year. You know, if the markets are sort of ignoring that in the short term that's fine i don't mind i don't mind riding along this rally all we're doing is moving you know the stops my sell stops higher up along with us we're not going to run for the hills but i tell you you've got to be aware of what's going on economically and and you've got to you work that into your investment strategy and that's all we do andrew i'll give you the last word and i think if we look at two markets right now um if you gave me cash to invest today, Amber, what market do I have the most confidence in? It's the bond market. Um, and in terms of our strategies, we're now zero cash on the bond portfolio, and we're still running 10% cash on the equity portfolio because that's, I think, where the risk is in these next five and to six months. And where in the bond market? Are you just going to hang out in something yeah. really safe, 5 6%? Um, or do you go into corporates, test out the junk market? I w would be steering clear of the junk market right now. This is, you know what, uh, boring is good. There's nothing wrong with boring. Amber. I can buy government bonds right now, probably get capital appreciation between now and, say, the first half of next year. Uh, good quality corporates, good investment grade corporates. You know, boring is good. If I can earn 5% at the front end of the market while I wait to see what the equity market wants to do, that's perfectly fine. All right, gentlemen, we got to leave it there. Thank